Good morning and welcome to the Change Your World podcast. It's lovely to have you all here with us. Uh, my name is Susie Bowman. I am the founder of Change Your World and a personal development consultant. Change Your World is an organization to help you create the life that you really want to live and live a happier, healthier life. And today I am joined by an absolute beautiful soul, Alexandra Wenman. She's got loads of titles to her name, but deep down, she is just an absolute beautiful soul. And it's just been a real pleasure. I'm so excited that I get to speak to you today. Al. So let me just tell the audience a little bit about you. I've got your, your bio here, but you are the Archangel Alchemist. As I say, you are a lovely soul, but you're an angelic channeler, alchemist and author. You're author of several books, but you are dedicated to normalizing the world of spirituality. Is that a, a fair assessment? Yeah. Of you? yeah. And I mean, I don't mean dumbing it down. I mean, let's make the supernatural normal to talk about, really. Yes. Let's just talk about it all. <laughs> it's the weird think, and the wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we very much, it's out there and it's cast as woo-woo and all the rest of it, but every one of us has some kind of experience at some point in our life that, we, that cannot be explained with everyday language or, or concepts that, you know, we're used to. So I hate using that term woo-woo, but this yeah. is what it is for some people, you know. It just feels like a bit out there, but this is what you're about. You're very much it's normalizing come with a lot of those things over the years, hasn't it? I think that's the mm. thing. And I, I think that we're now starting as a as a collective to to start breaking out of that a little bit. And it does it does bridge across into the world of men, mental health and all of those kinds of things. I think you've now got um, well-being is branching off more into spirituality and, and lots more people are covering it. It's becoming a little bit more mainstream these days. I mean, maybe not to the level that I teach it and share it. I don't know. Um, I, I'm quite ready for the success <laughs> of the trailblazer. <laughs> I'm pretty out there, but I have, you know, I'm, I'm used to, I grew up with the supernatural. I was born with it. Uh, you know, I died at birth and, you know, was kind of came into the world with a foot in either dimension. And I, and I think I've always just had the capacity to see what's beyond the physical. And I've dealt with, you know, going through being bullied for it, even into adulthood. But I, I've now got to the point where it's like, do you know what? We're in a, a time on this planet where everybody, as you say, has either had an experience or will be having an experience. Mm -hmm. And once you have an experience, you cannot unhave it. And yeah. there are, experiences you ha you can have where you cannot put it in a logical box mm -hmm. you can't explain it away mm -hmm. and um i think we're coming into a time where people like me and you susie and and coaches and channels and, and healers and mystics and you know there's a whole spectrum of us out there um working at various degrees at very various levels and in various topics and themes and i think we're very needed at the moment and mm -hmm. you know i never thought i'd kind of get to a place where I'd be confident enough to speak about this stuff publicly. I hid for many years. And like you, I worked in journalism and I, you know, I pretended to be normal and I tried to fit in and I, and I was just trying to be a normal girl. And actually I'm a super empath and I nearly spontaneously combusted with the amount of energy that I was bringing through my body and trying to hold my emotions together. And I think now that, um, now that I've found the tools that work for me, I really want to help, you know, bring them out and, and share them so that it can help other people navigate through their journey as well. If I can, you know, any of the books or courses or whatever that I do, it's all about harnessing the power of unconditional love as a way to hold your centre and, and navigate your way through any challenge you might be going through. Mm. And, um, yeah, yeah. And that's very much, I mean, this is what we're going to talk about today. We primarily have uh, met up because you are going to be holding this amazing conference. So we're going to be talking about that. But before we get into that, because the conference is all about helping people develop those skills. And I think it's important. And I want to say, you know, like you, I was like that very sort of black and white thinking you know I'd had sort of experiences that I couldn't really explain 
and then, you know, challenge, adversity, all kinds of things came up that made me start l- looking at a different perspective and looking at things differently and seeking alternative ways to heal because what was being presented through the GP or the, you know, the mainstream just was not working for me. And I had to find an alternative because it wasn't helping me become the true potential that I am, you know, developing myself. And that's why that set me on the journey of creating change a world. You know, first I went on my own journey of development, which did go into spirituality and realms that I was like, what the hell is this? And trying to, you know, communicate these experiences to my friends, family and loved ones and them going, she has officially lost it. She's lost her marbles. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> she has lost it. But it was like, okay, this was this real. It happened to me. So that's for another day. But that's what you do. But do tell us a little bit more about the work that you do and how you do help people to start their woo-woo journey. Start their woo-woo journey. Well, I usually do one-on-one um, client sessions and I also teach workshops and I've, I've, I'm a channel. So uh, over the years I've, ch- I've channeled and developed a couple of healing systems that have been certified and I'm a member of the Complementary Medical Association. I'm a school through them. And um, one of them, uh, this book that you see the cover behind me, Archangel Alchemy, is something I've been working on and developing for, gosh, 12 or 13 years. And that was gifted to me directly from the archangels. It was, I call it angelic technology because it really does bridge the science and the spiritual in. It's, it, you know, it, some of the symbols they gave me are all based on um, golden mean mathematics and the divine proportion. And to me, that's the mathematics of unconditional love. And what I've done with the book is I've taught people the whole, the whole healing system is in this book. So you don't need to go get the qualification. I wanted to gift it to the whole world. I, uh, when I went through all of this stuff that I went through, I never had a handbook and I didn't have a direction. And not to say that this is a definitive handbook. I don't think that is possible. Mm-hmm. But I've put a lot of information in this book. It's 336 pages, but a lot of it is practical processes And I teach you how to work with the the sacred geometries and the symbols that the angels have gifted me with. But every chapter of this book has a science aspect. So I've looked at scientific studies that will quantify the existence of angels. I've looked at the mathematics that actually proves that life beyond the physical exists. Incredible vortex mathematics, um, Fibonacci, all of that. And a lot of people are, are studying this now. I wanted to, you know, I, 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 like anyone, even though I've had firsthand experience with spirit and I have enough evidence for myself, like anyone, you always want evidence and your logical brain needs evidence. So this book, I, I tried to go some way towards finding evidence for my spiritual experiences and why the healing works because I've had incredible feedback from clients over the years on a spiritual, mental, emotional level. And we're not allowed to say that we can heal anything. We're, you know, we're, we're complementary health. But I have had experiences of things that I can't explain, and I know it's not me doing it. It is the divine working through me. And I wanted to find out, well, how is this possible? You know, what is this energy that I'm channeling, these, these tools that I've been given from the archangels and from spirit, how does that work? And so the chapters have all the science of the quantum physics, the mathematics. Um, I've even got science of near-death experiences, light language. We talk about all the very out there stuff, but it's also a handbook. So the, the first few chapters will teach you how to channel. It will teach you how to develop all of your psychic senses because I believe that we are all psychic. Mm-hmm. We all have healing gifts Uh, And if you want to learn how to develop those gifts, I take you on a step-by-step process to kind of break it down, put it into layman's terms so that it's easy to understand and, um, and give you practical tools as to how to use it. And my first coaching week that we did with you, I think we went through some of those tools and, well, you know, I was trying to teach people clairvoyance and of course we had the angels step in and it wasn't expected, (laughs) but there they were. And I was trying to keep it normal and it never seems to want to stay normal. And this is what I mean about normalizing the conversation this stuff is going to happen you can't put it in a box so we might as well bring it out in the open and talk about it so yeah so i i i took a break from 
doing one-on-one clients over the last year, mainly because I've been in the writing cave. Um, I have two Oracle deck. Well, I have one Oracle deck out, which is the Archangel Fire Oracle, which is oh, also um, sits very nicely alongside Archangel Alchemy. It's an alchemical healing journey through 40 Archangels. It's not so much an Oracle as in pull a card, get a message. You do but it's, there's actual healing processes in this. So it, you'll go through a personal alchemical transformation with it. And then that delves even deeper into it. Um, but I have been focusing since I came out of the writing cave uh, on um, re-releasing all my, my healing courses. So I have Archangel Alchemy. I have a course called Precious Wisdom Alchemy, which is a, another system that works similarly. It's a multidimensional healing system, but you can also use it um, for the earth and for groups. Uh, it, it's quite incredible. There's information about all of that on my website. And I'm also about to teach my World Angel Global Earth Service and Grid Worker Program. So that starts in August. And, yeah, so we're, um, I'm, also busy. Running, I'm very busy. And I'm also <laughs> running this amazing conference, um, which we're calling Alchemistic at the end of the year in November, which is excitingly going to be an in-person event and two days of um, face to face again connecting with real people connecting. i think it's really needed and mm-hmm. and in a beautiful space too in a beautiful um venue in glastonbury in avalon in the heart chakra of the planet and it's all about alchemy so really it's all about connecting people to love and how to use the energy of love to navigate your way through any challenge that you're having. We um, let's because you've said a lot there and there'll be some people completely lost other people totally following you. And, but let's take it step by step. I mean, first of all, you know, okay. Explain alchemy. What is alchemy? Alchemy is really transformation. If you think about ancient alchemists, it was said that they tried to turn lead into gold. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like an analogy for transforming yourself. You know, it's, a, it's like the, the analogy for the spiritual journey. And if we are the, the chunk of lead, you know, you think of mm. us as the chunk of lead, the density of the human condition and all of our human programming, all of our, you know, our childhood traumas, our wounds and the things that build up. And if you were to see your, yourself or your soul as a beautiful crystal, and all the, the stuff that's built up in that crystal. Um, it's essentially we're polishing that crystal up and clearing and, and transforming that dark, dense matter into more light, into a, a higher frequency, a higher vibration, and through the energy of love. So it's transformation, really. It's using love to transform yourself for the better in the simplest terms. And it's about exploring more about yourself. So alchemy also makes the unknown known or helps you to delve into the mystery of life. Why is this happening? We ask questions, why is this happening? And the more you know, the more wisdom and knowledge you acquire, also the more you're clearing and polishing it up. So it's two. It's it's like clearing but also bringing in, receiving, opening up to Creating um, awareness around that. Yeah, no. there's a real, du- it's, it's both. It's a dualistic process really, but it's, it's very multidimensional. But the simplicity is, you know, it's, it's if you want to better yourself, if you want to better your life, if you want to improve your experience of life, alchemy is, is a way to do that, a way to harness that vibration of love and learn to transform your life for the better. I always say it's a, a bit akin to putting your hands on the steering wheel of your life and taking charge of your life so that you can do it. But there's different, you know, there's different ways to come at alchemy. Obviously I build in angelic energies and frequencies. Um, but at this event, we're going to come at it from lots of different angles. There's lots of different teachers. I know Colm, who's, who's my co-host, he's very academic. He's studied Jung. He's, he's a font of knowledge. So he'll come at it from, a slightly different perspective. Yeah, he's an uh, alchemist psychotherapist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He looks at it very much from the psychology aspect. Mm. Um, and then we've got oh, we've got shamanic healers. We've got uh, Kundalini yogis. We've got um, I've got a, a beautiful hypnotherapist who's a dear friend of mine. Who she uh, also 
comes at it quite academically. She's taught medical students um, hypnosis and she teaches midwives, but she also um, does past life regression, life between lives, and is very multidimensional at the same time. So there's something for everybody, I think. You know, you're, you, we've got someone who looks at how to work through depression. You know, it's going to be very... Um, very connected, very practical, but also hopefully very beautiful experience and a spiritual experience for people. So I've also got a dear friend of mine whose name, his name is Chris Fitchu and he's a, an actor and a comedian, but also an amazing shaman. And he's going to be running a, an oxytocin joy workshop. So the alchemy of joy wow. as part of it. Nice. On both days. So yeah, so we're, we're, even though we're transforming and we're delving into our stuff, we're going to be lifting the energy and having a giggle as well, having a really having a really lovely time. So there'll be a bit of everything for everybody. And I should say, I mean, the reason why, so I know Colin, so Colin Holland and yourself, uh, because you've both been coaches uh, on my Change Your World Every Day coaching program, which is a daily online coaching uh, group. And I, you know, when I connected with both of you, there was that instant you know, chemistry, alchemy, you know, of just creating and helping to facilitate transformation. And that's why, you know, I'm so pleased to be able to speak to you about this because I really do want to spread, help spread the word about this because there will be magic happening in that, uh, the, I was going to say that room, but it's over a two-day event. And there's going to be, you know, as you've said, all these incredible speakers. If somebody's sort of thinking okay, uh, I'm still not quite sure, you know, what you've said it's for everyone, somebody can gain something. But if somebody's just sitting here listening to it and going, okay, I need to make some changes in my life. I need, I don't know where to start. Would this be uh, a great yeah. Or does somebody, do you level. have to have a foundation of a certain understanding of alchemy and this not journey? Not at all, not at all. Wait, the, uh, the way I work, and de- and definitely the way some of our speakers work, I know uh, they're very, very, uh, how can I put it, beautiful speakers, amazing speakers, very eloquent, easy, easy to follow. But I know that what happens in uh, in an alchemical process, in an alchemical workshop or talk, is that lots more goes on behind the scenes than you could consciously ever grasp. So the words like, I know that as a channel, I often say this, you know, when I open to channel, the words are just one part. Yeah. You'll feel the energy, like the energy around you becomes almost tangible. You'll feel a palpable shift in the room, in your energy field, in the space. But I would say to people, you know, if you feel drawn to it, if it resonates with you, even if you don't know why, yeah, then it's yeah. for you. Like I remember doing courses when I was younger and, you know, I'd hear about certain things and it might sound a bit weird and a bit out there and I didn't really know what the meaning of the word was. Like Reiki, for example, how many yeah. people know about Reiki and feel drawn to Reiki? But I just knew I had to be there. And, and every time I listened to that inner voice or that inner feeling, that gut feeling of I don't know what this is about, yeah. But I know I've got to be there. You've got to follow it. I would do it. And oftentimes you get resistance too. I would often have resistance, a little bit of resistance before. Because the fear kicks in then. A little bit of fear kicks in, but I think also the subconscious knows you're going to make changes. Yeah. You will often have this, the, this a need to be there, but you might have a little, oh God, but should I go? I mean, mm-hmm. really, and because the logical mind starts to have a little mini freak out sometimes and goes, do you really want to leave your safe zone? Yeah. But because we know how this works. I mean, this yeah, might not be working for us, but we know how it works, as uncomfortable as it is. That's it. But yeah. we have to sometimes step out of our comfort zone in order to make the changes we need to change to get the life we have needed. I'm have no stranger to that. Zone. Yeah. Yeah. I've, had, I've had rug pulling moments in my life, you know. It's, for me, it's always very rapid and like, ah, and dramatic. But, you know, it's your your... Your life, your spirit, your higher self, your your soul will always meet you where you need to be met and will always deliver to you exactly what you need. Yeah. And I'm, I think we've handpicked a really beautiful bunch of speakers. And, you know, a lot of them, some of them have, you know, some of them are quite well known and some of them aren't that well known. I guess you might not have seen them kind of 
around and about the speaking circuit, but all of them are absolute experts in their field and have such a wealth of knowledge to share. And I mean, you know, we've got people talking about performance, but also perf- how we perform in our daily lives, you know, mm. what, what, how do we act in our daily lives and what, do we, what masks do we wear and how do we present ourselves to the world? Um, it's, just going, it's just going to be one of those, those weekends, it's two full days where we just delve in and as a collective and as individuals, we're all going to get some wonderful gifts. But, you know, the, the, the glue of it is love and it's all about connection, reconnection, also connecting to the earth and the land because it's being held in Abbey House in Glastonbury, beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. old stone building. It's absolutely gorgeous. We've got the whole house to ourselves and the grounds are stunning. It actually overlooks Glastonbury Abbey and wow. the, the flowers and the plants and everything are absolutely stunning. There's a huge big old magnolia tree out the back. And, I mean, magnolia is unconditional love, isn't it? And it, yeah. it's gorgeous. I mean, it sounds amazing. And uh, one of the things I want to pick up, because of, well, a couple of things I want to pick up, but you'd said about, you know, when you're in that room together and it's not just the the words of the speaker uh, that you know magic starts happening and I know that from the events that I've put on you know I've hosted large uh, conferences and that energy is palpable you you see people coming in they're nervous they're apprehensive you know they, they don't know what they signed up so maybe their friend has dragged them along or you know the mum or loved one or you know partner and they're like oh I don't want to be here but by the end of it, you know, they've heard the speakers and they're just, it's those little seeds that get dropped in and it's that inspiration that starts to grow within the individual. And then they're surrounded by a whole room of people that are there with you getting it and going, having the light bulb moments, having the, the ignition that yes, I can do this, I can change, I can be more than I currently am, or having that inspir- that idea that ah, this is what I'm going to do when I leave, and just that energy that is created in that room. And I, I, you know, I've seen it at the start of my conferences, where my, you know, I've got a good friend Alistair, you know, he's very good at reading energy, very intuitive. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like, what, what's going on? Because I'm like, you know, as a host, I'm like anxious, thinking, are they enjoying it? But, you know, he's like, yeah, it's really sinking in. It's landing, you know, and you can see it. And then by the end, you know, it builds and builds as the day goes. So that's just from a kind of event with the kind of motivational speakers, not people that are coming from a very spiritual, alchemistic so I also want to say that when you have a when you have a group of it because I know you and I were talking before we started recording about how many healers are moving more into group events and not so many are doing one-on-ones and I think that that probably speaks to how the energy on the planet is at the moment and what's what's needed at the moment and one thing I need in connection we've been isolated too long I also know that when you have more than two people come together with a shared um, purpose or a shared uh, intention the energy is powerful so when you get a group together like that and we're going to be actively setting intention not just for ourselves but for the collective and actually opening up that group space to the divine to work through us. And that means that we're all going to be creating a group field where we all get the benefit of that. And it's my intention that we're all going to experience miracles as a result of this conference. And I, and whenever I've set that intention, I have not just set that intention for this conference. I've done that before. Whenever I've set intention that we're going to get real tangible real world 3d results and and miracles and evidence that we have been through a shift it always always happens i mean i've seen stuff when i've run my world angel courses and things like that we've been told you'll see this play out on the news and it's happened Mm -hmm. it's actually incredible and you know i don't want to sit here and make promises but i've seen amazing stuff happen and i've seen what can happen when a group says right we all want to transform. We're we're offering this transformation for ourselves as individuals Mm. 
for the group, but we also share the energy of it with the collective, with yeah. the whole planet. So we're holding okay. like a microcosm of the macrocosm. Yeah. And my God, does it feel amazing when you're doing work like that. It's so beautiful. And you will see the evidence. You'll each get evidence. Well, that's what I want to explore. I mean, I want, I want to hear more about how you physically channel. What does it feel like? What does it look like? I mean, you know, you said that you've had this gift right from childhood. Um, you, you know, you threw into the conversation, well, I died at birth and, you know, <laughs> very, cause, you know, very casual. That. But, oh, right. Okay. I'm like, there's a story there I'd like to explore, but, you know, you just casually sort of put that into the mix. But what, you know, what do you feel? How does, how does life look to Alexandra Wendman? It's very magical. Well, I was thinking maybe why don't we do a taster of channeling? Why don't we do some yeah. channeling? Yeah. Right? Okay, well, let's give us a flavor of what we can okay. explain. Well, normally, I'll, uh, so I'll, I can guide people into a space as well where they can feel the energy and let's see who or what comes through. I mean, I always just open up to the divine and see what comes through and what messages will come through for the group. So, first of all, the invitation is to just to close your eyes. And I want to say channeling is not, it's not like trans mediumship and, and beings are not going to take over your body or anything like that but i will be merging with consciousness of either who knows angels or guides or whoever wants to step in and speak to the group and it's very much me speaking but it is sometimes channeling is like interpreting a message and sometimes i do direct channeling where they will you know speak through me i'm very conscious of what's being said but it's like a beautiful message that's being relayed um, what I feel when it happens is a rush of the most incredible love running through my body. It's like I've plugged myself mm -hmm. into an electrical socket of love. Wow. I can feel my p hands and toes and my body tingles and I, I see light streaming through my body. Um, can I'm you so just busy. switch it on and off when you want that? Yeah, I can. Why I can do it on the tube. <laughs> Like, yeah. it's, like, well, it's like I'm constantly connected these days, but I'm always grounded. I teach how to open up and close down your energy field. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to give people an experience of feeling it. So what you do is you want to have your feet nice and flat on the floor. Um, and you don't have to be sitting up if you're lying down. That's fine. But you want to be connected to your body. You want to feel really grounded in your body. So be aware of your physical body. And then just start to take some deep breaths in. I want you to be aware of your heart. And as you close your eyes, set the intention that you're moving your conscious awareness from your mind or your head down into your heart space. And you want to really sit your awareness in your heart. If you could imagine you're looking out at the world through your heart and then imagine your heart like a big pinky white rose opening. So your heart chakra opens right up. And as your heart chakra opens up, you're opening up your whole energy field through love. And we're going to allow that pinky white rose to burst into a beautiful pinky white flame, the flame of unconditional love. And we're going to add in some green, some beautiful spring leaf green for healing. And we're going to add in some gold. And so I want you to see all these beautiful colors and this flame glowing in your heart into a beautiful sphere like an inner sun. And then we're going to allow it all to mix in and become a diamond white flame and a sphere of that diamond white flame. And we're going to, with every breath in, I want you to see that sphere glowing and growing in size, getting bigger and brighter. So it grows right out through your energy field. And you're going to stretch it right out through your auric field so that it's like you're sitting in that sphere of light now. Make it really big right out into your auric field. And if you want, you can make it as big as the room that you're sitting in. And this creates a, a beautiful sphere of protection. We fill it with white light. And we're going to seal it in gold so you see gold all the way around the edge of this sphere. And it's filled with diamond white light. And we're going to just breathe away anything that shouldn't be in this space. So any worries, any fears, any doubts, any cares, this is the energy of unconditional love. And I want you to just bathe in this unconditional love. With every breath in, you're taking more light, more love into yourselves. And what you're doing is you're raising up your frequency and vibration to one of joy, of happiness. Think of emotions you want to feel, and if you can imagine them, then you can start to feel them. 
So just think of what it would feel like to feel blissfully at peace within your body, within yourself. What if you could imagine that you had all your needs already met? There was no, nothing to worry about. You had plenty of food on the table, money in your bank account, friends and family around you, full of joy, full of celebration. Life was good, glorious weather, all the things that you need, that everything's going right, everything's going well. And then I want you to open to a miracle. I want you to connect to your joy. And we're going to add in the color yellow, bright, sunshiny yellow into this sphere. We're going to fill it with the color of joy, which to me is sunshine yellow. And I want you to imagine what it would feel like if you knew an amazing opportunity or experience was about to land in your lap. You might not know what it is, but if you could just feel it in the air that something really incredible and miraculous was about to come into your life. And when you connect to this feeling and you open to the expectation that something good is going to happen, you invite something really good and unexpected to come into your life. And I want you to imagine what it would feel like if this thing was going to be way better than you ever expected. And I don't want you to think about what it might be. I just want you to connect to the feeling. And in connecting to that feeling, you are opening up to miracles to pour down upon you from the heavens. And as they do, I want you to imagine a huge pillar or column of light coming all the way down from infinite divine mother, father, God, goddess, source from that infinite light of creation down through the sun, pouring down over you like golden sunlight and creating a column of golden white fire and coming all the way down through your body and connecting that pillar of light or that waterfall of light all the way down into the very center of the earth. And you're connected to the multidimensional above and below and spherically around you, protected by your sphere of protection so no negativity can enter your space. You're completely safe. And we're just going to call in all of the guides and angels who are your own personal protection team to come and stand around you and hold the space and just seal your space. And I want you to be aware of a beautiful angelic being of light materializing behind you now. And this being of light is lit up in that beautiful sunshine yellow. And you might be aware of sparkles of violet energy coming through the yellow, so mostly bright sunlight. If you could imagine an angelic being with huge wings of this bright yellow sunlight that lit up in this energy like a, like a divine fire. I want you to imagine that you can feel the energy of this being as it stands behind you, feel the love and the warmth coming from it. Now, this angel that has appeared for us, and it is standing behind every single one of us, by the way, because an archangel can be with everyone simultaneously. They, are, they have no gender. They're neither male nor female. They exist in all realms at once, including our, in our own consciousness because they're part of ourselves. And this particular archangel is an archangel known by the name of Jophiel or Jophiel. And interestingly, as the name sounds, this is the angel of joy who's come to join us here today. Joy and miracles. I'm being told, don't forget the word miracles. Jophiel brings miracles. So Jophiel is asking if I will relay a message to the group today. And I want you to just really feel the love coming from this angel. Jophiel will really make you feel really lit up from the inside. Very joyful. We're going to have an experience of joyful alchemy and it's funny i mentioned chris because he's going to be doing all the out the joy alchemy and the oxytocin but this is bringing it through the angelic kingdom for us so you might be feeling your fingers and toes tingling you might feel temperature changes and when an archangel or an angel is present you might actually feel your spine and your neck being worked on you might feel taller you might feel some heaviness around your shoulders that's all perfectly normal and you're completely safe and protected here in this space so I'm going to invite Joe Field to start infusing your energy field with the yellow and the violet. If you wish, and this is only if you feel comfortable, you can actually invite this angel to stand in your energy field. 
and allow yourself to dissolve like an aspirin in water in this angel's energy so that you become one with this angel. You might want to giggle. You might actually be feeling it. It lights you up from the inside. And it's like an infusion of Joe Fields' energy and spirit. And because angels aren't separate from us, they are part of our own consciousness. If you think of it as you're activating your own joyful archangelic vibration you are becoming the archangel joe fiel so just allow yourself to transform into the angel as though you're becoming the angel and i want you to be aware that in your left hand joe Fiel is placing a small gift or a symbol this is your piece of evidence that this angel is present with us now you will see this piece of evidence or hear about it, or it will be shown to you somewhere in the next probably two weeks. Usually it's around a fortnight. You don't need to go and look for it. When you least expect it, you will receive your gift. I am seeing a yellow rose. I'm being given a yellow rose, so someone might have seen that. But you'll be given a gift or a small symbol that is relevant to you. So just spend a moment and imagine. Now, we use our imagination with this. Don't discount your imagination. It is the way to connect with spirit. And if I said to you, if you could imagine what symbol might be being put in your hand, what would you imagine that symbol would be? And it will be the first thing you think of. Now, your logical mind might say, oh, but you're just imagining that, okay? So what? Okay, logical mind, that's fine. We're just playing. Yeah, we're just going to imagine it. So just imagine. So I would imagine a yellow rose. And I expect at some point in my physical life, I'm going to see a yellow rose or be given a yellow rose or hear about a yellow rose in the coming fortnight or so after hearing this being here. Take that symbol once you have it, place it in your heart center to say, yes, I, I wish to experience more joy in my life. You're receiving the joy that Joe Field brings. I wish to receive more, more joy, more upliftment, more miracles. They're just saying, don't forget the miracles. Okay. <laughs> so let's see what Joe Field wishes to bring. Okay. So she's calling the, everyone listening to this, she's saying soft, sweet ones, soft ones. Soft ones, I come with a message to remember to be gentle with yourselves. In the coming days, weeks, and months, you will need to soften ever more into your gentleness, into your ability to cushion yourselves with ever more love, to surround yourselves with ever more beauty, to allow yourselves ever more time to relax and retreat and unfold in your softness. Become like the petals of a rose. Allow yourselves now to open and soften. Let go of your resistance to love. Love is the key to the miraculous. And the more you can open to love and bathe in its qualities, the more miracles you will receive. I have come with a frequency of delight for you here today. I wish for you to imagine what love would taste like, what love would smell like if it had a perfume, what love would sound like if it were music, beautiful music being played? What texture would love have if you could reach out and touch it and feel its softness? What temperature would love be? Would it be warm or cool? And all of these imaginings are connecting you to your own extrasensory gifts and senses so that you may experience more of the wonders and the joys of the worlds beyond the world. Is it not currently a miracle that you are able to connect with me here and imagine what I have just invited you to imagine? What if you could imagine that everything was unfolding 
in perfect divine timing, in the most perfect, wondrous, miraculous way for you. What if you could let go of doubt? I invite you to feel where you are holding the core of doubt in your body. Feel where it resides. And you may be aware of a sensation of density arising in your body. You might just imagine that you know the place where you hold your doubt. And is this doubt a self-doubt? Or perhaps this is a doubt about the state of humanity and, and our capabilities. Wherever the doubt is arising from, I do not wish for you to bury it. It is an invitation to embrace this doubt. Any emotion you hold is a way that you have learnt to survive in this world. Perhaps this doubt is connected to the spiritual. Perhaps you doubt the existence of us angels. And the invitation is merely just to imagine that we might exist and imagine that you might have as yet invisible helpers but perhaps from today not so invisible in your life, for how you are seeing and perceiving me here now is how you are meant to see and perceive me. If you could imagine what Archangel Jophiel looked like, what would I look like in your mind's eye? Perhaps I have beautiful silk satin yellow robes. If I were to appear in human form, with beautiful wings, how would you see me? What would it feel like to be in my presence? If you can imagine this, then you are experiencing it in real time. For I am here among you, and I have come at your request. Though the energies may be subtle, do not discount the experience that you are having. I offer each of you an opportunity now to make of me a heartfelt wish or request. And the question is, in what area of your life do you most need a miracle now? In what area of your life do you most need a miraculous opening or pathway out of a situation or into a situation? All you need do is name the area and know I am with you and trust. Hold the vibration of absolute trust that your wish has been heard and a solution is on the way. And this is how you aid in the alchemical process. We angels cannot help you without your permission. So you must make your request. We do not have free will. We cannot assist without your consent. As you make your request, feel the light around you growing stronger. Feel my love entering your heart. Know that you yourself are a miracle of life. Think about the fact that once upon a time, you did not exist in this physical form as you exist now. You were created and born. But once upon a time, you were a mere thought, a wish in the eyes and the minds and the hearts of your parents. You are a wish made manifest on this earth. You are a miracle that has come to light and you are evidence and proof that miracles exist. So honor yourself, see yourself as a miracle 
every day of your life. Walk on this earth as though you are the most miraculous creation in this world and as though your life is a miracle and filled with miracles and you will magnetize more miracles to yourself. Breathe in and feel the joy of the fact that you have connected to the truth that you are a walking miracle. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate your life. Let yourself sing and dance and jump for joy at this truth and no one can take it from you. If you are living proof that miracles exist, then you can go forth and create more miracles. Hold this truth in your heart, beloveds, and it shall be so. I am the Archangel Jophiel. I have come at your request. It is my desire to shower your lives with more miracles. Soften into self-love. Know your value. Hand over to me now all your doubt. See it rising through your body and out the crown of your head. Feel those pockets of self-doubt leaving you now. And if you wish to let go of your doubt so that you may have a miraculous experience, perhaps you wish to have your own experience of channeling an archangel. Perhaps some of you can see me and feel me now. Perhaps some of you are even hearing your own personal messages from me now. I leave you with the symbol of the yellow feather. Be aware that angels often leave feathers in your path as pieces of evidence that we do indeed exist. You might be thinking that a yellow feather is slightly obscure. I leave you with the yellow feather so that there is irrefutable proof for you that this meeting has occurred. The yellow feather in image, in word, or in physical form, somehow it will appear to you, perhaps even on your television, in a magazine, it may even be verbalized in conversation. The yellow feather will be your evidence that you have had a personal audience and connection with me here today. I am Archangel Jophiel. Blessings of bliss, wonder, miracles and joy be upon you. You are truly blessed and you are walking miracles of creation. And as such, you are all alchemists. I leave you now to discuss all that has been shared, but know this, each of you is being gifted with a magical yellow cloak of miracles and protection. Feel this silk satin cloak falling around your shoulders now and allow it to absorb into your energy field to keep your vibration high. And if you should ever feel low, place your cloak around you and lift your vibration, remembering that you are a miracle of God's creation. So just taking a deep breath in and you just want to very gently imagine Joe Field stepping out of your energy field if the angel did indeed step into your energy field. Feel Archangel Joe Field standing behind you once more and Joe Field is going to stay with us just to hold the space where we continue our conversation, just to keep the vibration nice and high. And in your sphere of energy now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to then close down your energy field and seal your energy field again. So be aware of that huge sphere of gold and white energy that's been infused with yellow. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull it in. You're going to shrink your consciousness. I do a process called shrink, sink, and shield. And this is all in the book, but you shrink your consciousness right down so that your awareness is completely contained in your physical body. And we're going to 
bring that sphere in so that it's like a golden lining all the way around the outside of your body. So shrink, 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 really consciously pull your energy in. You sink your weight into the chair, into your body. Now, you might feel a bit floaty and a bit tingly still. We have had a really big experience with Joe Field, but you probably just feel an overall sense of well-being, and that's welcome. You don't need to shut that off. Just keep that running. It's beautiful. But we sink our weight into the chair, and then we shield, and we shield again either with a cloak or whatever you need to shield with. You might want to have a shield and a sword or whatever you see as protection. I usually put a huge, big octahedral-shaped diamond in my energy field, and I see it as being the hardness of a diamond on the outside, I fill it with white light and I, see, I set it spinning in a clockwise direction so it continues to spin out any lower vibration energy. But I seal my fields by placing a finger to my lips. But ultimately, shrink your energy, sink your weight, shield your field, and you are shielded. And so you will have gotten through that. Like I said, the words are just one part. So much more will be coming through that experience than you can imagine. And I would love if you want to feed back to Susie or I, mm. if you see your symbol that you got given in your left hand or if you see the yellow feather, I want to know all about it because I love these bits of evidence. They're just so wonderful. And just remember, it, it is your imagination. Of course it's your imagination. You can't access the beyond without your imagination. We have a, a logical brain and we have an intuitive brain and we need both to exist in this world. So... Just allow yourselves to have fun and know that if you wish, Jophiel will go with you everywhere. Any archangel will go with you everywhere if you want them to be with you. Thank you for that. That was a lovely experience. Just even just pausing in my very busy day just to kind of go, go sit and reconnect with myself. And then it's that thing where, you know, one of my spiritual messages um, or experiences was this feeling you're never alone. Like I felt there was a period in my life I felt very lonely and alone and I was really struggling. I felt like physically there's nobody here. There's, you know, and I, I felt that sadness in my heart. It was after a lot of bereavement. And I remember that key message coming through you're not alone, you're not alone. And it was like almost like just talking to me because that was my nemesis at the, t at the time. And just that whole experience and whether I, whatever our audience feel or felt or experienced, whether the cynical brain came in, they're going, <laughs> what is this? You know, Always welcome. <laughs> it, it is, if nothing else, it is just that opportunity to reconnect with yourself and reconnect with your own inner wisdom and when you were saying about um the imagination coming in that's your own inner wisdom i feel and the Absolutely. personal messages that you need it's for all your higher self yeah. at the end of the day. And e yeah and even if you you know you couldn't quite let go uh, the, the brain's just taking over going what is this i don't i'm not seeing anything i'm not feeling anything I, who's she talking about oh you know all these kind of this narrative that goes on it's it's the things that might happen or not might will happen because in my yeah, experience just be never open actually to, never think, let yeah. me down because just be open to the evidence like when i first started well i angel talking chatting to me um and i would see like because obviously you know i i had the gift from a very the the abilities from a very young age but then i was sent to catholic school and i was you know it, it all got shut down yeah and it was when i was 14 it started opening up again and then i shut it down again and then when i was 21 it got blasted open when i moved to london and i couldn't avoid it anymore i mean what did when you say you shut it down what what were you feeling and experiencing and seeing? Well, I what, guess like you know, most people, you know, I would be like, oh, it's not happening. I'm just going to get on with, you know, no. But not would it happening. be like verbal voices that you were hearing? Were you seeing? Oh, for me, it's everything. Or? Yeah. So it, mostly I have, um, first and foremost, it's feeling. And every single person has the ability to feel, which is why when we connected and Joe Feel was saying, what would it taste like? What would it smell mm. like? These are extensions of our actual five senses, you know, but these are the extensions of them. So I would feel, I would always feel if there was energy around me, but because I'm so clairvoyant, 
And clairvoyant doesn't necessarily mean you're seeing things in the physical, by the way. You see it with your mind's eye. So you see it in your imagination. You see it in your mind. I do see things, um, beings tangibly and physically sometimes, but it's much more in my, uh, with my, my clear sight, my inner sight. Mm. So what would happen is I would feel energy first and I would feel that love, that all enveloping love would just come around me. And this is a, 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 the description of quite a subtle one. So it would be quite subtle. But because I'm so visual, in order to know what things mean or how things operate, in the, like I'm visual in my day-to-day -day experience too. I always learn by I have to yeah, see yeah. something. I'm a visual down. learner too. Yeah, yeah, very visual. So I would always go, oh, what am I feeling? And then I would close my eyes and go, what is this feeling? And then I would see what was going on. I would be given a picture as to what it means. And you start to learn to interpret the pictures in your mind as in like, we could be showing something random. Like it's really weird when, when I was younger, I, mean, I was probably about 14. I said to my mom, who's very clairvoyant as well. I was like, how does it work? How do you get it to work? And she said, well, you just, you close your eyes and you ask spirit or the divine or whatever your guides, your higher self, you ask to be given a message and you might see an image and you might, you might not know what that image is. You could see yourself swinging on a star or something and you ask, what does that mean to me? How would you interpret it? And that's how you, you interpret. And so I was, you know, probably about 14. I tried it. I closed my eyes and I went, oh, what do I need to know? And immediately this book went poof, in, it lit up in white light, this book, poof. And I thought, oh, what's this book? And here I am writing books about these topics. So it was shown to me when I was really young that I was going wow. to be writing these books. But to me, this was the book of all knowledge I was being shown, that I had access to whatever knowledge I needed through that by closing my eyes and, and going, what do I need to know? You can access anything. We, we have access to the multidimensional. So that's how it experiences for me. It's usually a feeling and then I interpret it and I'll get an image. But the more I've developed it, the more kind of holographic it's become. So I see, I feel, I hear. Normally when I hear spirit, it comes in from my right side in my right ear. Um, and what will it sound like? Like somebody just talking to you in your ear, like just standing beside yeah, you? Or is it a different voice? Is there something? It's a very weird? loving voice. And it sounds like your own thoughts. So it can be very subtle, which is why it takes a little bit of training and it takes trust. So mm. if you get like a, usually it's quieter voice than the mean voice that we talk to ourselves in, you know, we're often really mean to ourselves, like mm. Alex, you idiot, you know, that voice. Yeah. And then there's beloved, you know, usually they will speak so lovingly and your higher self will always be very loving. But if you can attune yourself to hearing that quiet, small, that smaller voice at first and you listen to it more, it becomes louder. Mm -hmm. So now my loving voice is way louder than the voice of doubt. And I don't mm. even listen. I don't even give it attention, that voice of doubt. You know, it's like sometimes, you know, the inner voice will warn you about stuff and you have to listen. But the, that naysaying voice that tells you you're not good enough or, you know, that you're imagining it or you're making it up is usually the voice of conditioning. It will be like yeah. your parent's voice or your teacher's voice or the priest. You know? <laughs> and it's like, don't listen to that voice. Listen to the voice of your higher self. Ask for a message. It will always be loving. If you're working with beings of, of love, they will never tell you what to do. They will always offer. It's an invitation. Right? It's always a, a two-way conversation. Not, they will never force you to do anything or tell you that you have to do anything. It's 18, 18 on the clock while we do this. Um, so they'll always be very loving and it's very subtle. And often it just sounds like your, your own thoughts, like my clear audience. And again, sometimes it's tangible. Sometimes I get shouted at in my sleep, but it's actual audible, Alex, and I, you know, wake up. But wow. most of the time it's an inner voice. It sounds like your own thoughts, which is why we discount it. We think, oh, I'm mm. imagining that voice. But if you sit in meditation and learn to open and learn to listen, and again, you can use imagination. If my higher self was giving me a message, what might it be saying now? You can even do it with your loved ones in yeah. spirit. Invite them forward. If I imagined that, you know, my grandma was giving me a message right now, what might she be saying? Mm. Okay, don't forget to pack the cardigan. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she, and the thing is, these lot voices do, but we do discredit. I mean, that's what I was saying, you know, that time when I felt so alone and I was told, you know, I had this message, I'm not alone, I'm not alone. And then I had started having 
other messages kind of like you know when I stop to sort of say what do I need Mm. what should I do now what's this about like they actually stop to ask instead of just like busily charging through charging through (laughs) and trying to figure out figure it all out with my logical mind I was like okay let's just stop and pause here what and there would be a voice and my voice when I've had I mean I've had experiences where Something has come in. So like when I started my BBC career, I remember I was working in, uh, where was it? Sports division. <laughs> Job I hated. Yeah. And I, but I had no idea what I needed to do or what I wanted to do. And I remember just tucking myself away. I was, it was a busy Saturday and I thought, I'm just going to do this mundane task of uniforming all the coat hangers, so changing all the boring job. I was the manager of the shop. I shouldn't have been doing it, but I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to lock myself away and do this. And I kept asking the question, what should I be doing? What can I do? What else should I do? And by the end of the day, it didn't come instantly for me, but at the end of the day, this voice that came into my head and it went, TV or radio researcher? And I was like, where the hell did that come from? Mm-hmm. And I, But it was such a loud different voice it was my voice but it was a the only way I can describe it it was a voice that um I had to respond to I had to act on like there was a knowing there and I thought I don't even know where to begin with this and you know I finished my shift closed up the shop and then went home looked on the computer was like tv researcher radio researcher uh, studying at local college had courses and I, I went that was the Saturday my day off was the Wednesday I went in the Wednesday I didn't even phone up this was the days before you really use the internet and I went in and I said um I said I'm inquiring about um you know tv or radio research and she said oh the course is actually just about to begin you know you're you're late in applying but if you go up to the department head have a conversation and see, you know, she see what she says about it. Went upstairs. I can't even remember what I had, what conversation I had, <laughs> what was said in that conversation. But she said, I tell you what, she goes, if you can start next week, I will give you a conditional offer right here and now. I didn't have a piece of paper. Okay, that's a miracle, right? That's a miraculous opening. Yeah. That's spirit yeah. going, here's your opportunity. Absolutely. That, that is I mean, I, right time, right place, yeah. right everything. I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even have a piece of paper from her with the offer. I I went home, I told my parents, told my family, they were just like, you're mad. (laughs) You can't get, you've got a good job, you can't give that up. Because I was young, I was like a manager of a shop and I'd done quite well in there. And I was just like, no, this is not what I want to do. And then started the college course. I didn't have any money. (laughs) It was just like, and I remember pushing open the doors of uh, my first day, these double doors, I remember it so clearly, and just having this overriding feeling, (sighs) this is going to be amazing, this is the right thing to do. And it was that, you know, it was two years of studying and then it led on to an 18-year career as a BBC producer and radio or researcher then producer. And it was fantastic and that's led me on to where I am today. But that voice does come in, but it's learning to act on it when you hear it. Even if your naysayer voice goes, Mm-mm. what are you talking about? Well, you j- just go with it. Just let the chain of events happen. So I'm conscious of time. I know we're, we're running out of time. So you've got this fantastic event coming up where magic is going to happen. Tell us again, where can people find more information? So it's two full days on the 5th and 6th of November and interestingly yes we're talking about it's uh, bonfire night so you connect with the archangel fire on the bonfire night <laughs> Love it. Um, so 5th and 6th of November this year and um, if you go to um, the website all the links will be below there's early bird price there and you get quite a hefty chunk off the ticket price if you book early so all the details will be below and um yeah, we hope to see you there. If if anyone has any questions, they can they can let us know or um, just drop us an email or anything. But um, come and connect and have a wonderful time and come away just feeling transformed. You know, I feel like 
If anyone needs answers, you know, so many of us need answers at the moment and we're really, really facing the mystery right now and lots of people are, are feeling a bit lost and don't really know what's happening on the planet. But if you feel like you need answers, you feel like you've lost your way a bit, you need some support, you want to connect with like-minded people, you want to have a, a, a an experience of... <laughs> really feeling heartfelt connection and loving community and going through a very rapid transformation, then come and join us. We'd love to see you there. And um, Susie, thank you so much for sharing as well. This oh, is not at all. Been lovely. An absolute pleasure. And I do think what you said there about um, losing, lost your way, I think so many people and certainly people I'm working with, that has been a common theme People have just lost direction. They've lost sight of themselves. Mm. They've been isolated, you know, separated. And it is really now time to connect. It's separation that is causing the pain and suffering in this world. And, you know, me and you, we've spoke about this before in a previous podcast about what would love do. Mm. And love would always connect. It never divides. It never separates. It never alienates. It's always about connection. And that's what I think fundamentally is going to happen on, on these special, these two days at this amazing conference. So it's worth pointing out it is a limited capacity. You only have 85 spaces, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. So tickets will fly off the shelf. So you can go to the website, register now and get information of the early bird tickets as soon as they are released. So do not delay and sign up for that registration. Um, and then you can find out more information about when the tickets go live and be the first one there. But be the thank first you. ones in the first row. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much, Alexandra. It's been an absolute pleasure. You are such a beautiful soul doing wonderful work. So uh, thank you. And thank you. I've got to say, it takes one to know one as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're both, we're both out there doing our best, trying to uh, yeah bring love and harmony to the world and connect people because that's what it's all about so yeah 100%. thank you thank you angel